The camera here in my hand is the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II. It's the second generation of a camera that Sony designed to be a vlogging camera, and it's got a lot of improvements over the previous version of the camera, but there's some really weird choices in here too. So when the first version of this camera came out, Sony had already released the excellent ZV-1. So here's the original ZV-1. It's one of my favorite cameras, and it's definitely my favorite camera for doing handheld vlogging. One of the reasons is because it has built-in image stabilization, which I really like. This camera does not have built-in image stabilization, which means that in order for you to get footage that is not bouncy, you need to use a lens like the one I have on here. So it's 16 millimeters, which is what we're at now. It's the equivalent of a 24, 25 millimeter lens. So I have to hold the camera really far away in order to not have my face fill up the entire frame. So it's really hard to show you that without taking a look at it. So here is how I am holding this and it's almost completely at my uh, extended arm and it's really uncomfortable. Sony also makes a vlogging kit for this which is a handle which is really great. It lets you hold the camera out a lot farther and of course you could put it on a selfie stick or something but that adds complexity and it adds size. Some of the biggest improvements in this camera is video quality. The original ZV-E10 only was able to do 8-bit 420 video this camera can do 10-bit 422 video. It can also do Sony's S-Log and s -Cine Tone. And if you don't know what any of that means, that's part of what I think is the problem with this camera, is that this camera has all these advanced video features, but it's still designed to be a rather entry-level vlogging camera. What I think it has the potential to be, though, is a fantastic studio camera. The reason I think that is because you just put it on a tripod. You don't have to worry about the image stabilization issues. And it's got really great video quality, which means you're getting the best video quality possible off of the sensor for very little money. There's no electronic viewfinder, which means I have to look at the monitor on the side. A bunch of people have said that the monitor isn't bright enough. It is. You can just go into the monitor settings and set it to sunny day. Another weird issue is that the battery life isn't particularly great, which is strange for this battery. This is Sony's larger Z battery. It should get a lot of use. I am at 71% and I've only been recording for about 10 minutes. I'm recording in 422, I'm recording in 10 bit, so those of course take more processing power to work. I do really like that the camera can flip vertical and for the first time in one of these series cameras, the interface flips vertical as well, which is really nice. Okay, so let's go back to the studio. I'm gonna run down some of the pros and the cons of this camera pretty quickly though. And then I'm gonna tell you what my thoughts are about this camera and whether or not I'm going to die just walking off of a cliff like that vlogging. So this part's going to be pretty quick, as I really talked already about what I think are the biggest pros and cons. I just want to wrap this up. As a spoiler alert, I'm going to recommend that if you're a vlogger, you consider a different camera, and I'll tell you which camera at the end. But hear me out. I still think that you probably should buy this camera, and I'll tell you why. When you think about vlogging, you usually think about the OG vloggers walking around Paris with their GoPro and their iPhone and shooting video of their experience. Vlogging is all about light and portable, and the ZV-E10 II is light unless you put on a lens and the grip and a better microphone, all things that you actually need. Lots of influencers still do travel and other vlogging on Instagram and TikTok and Amazon, but an iPhone with an add-on microphone already has that covered. I could probably end this video here, and you'd think that I don't like the camera, but I really do. The Sony ZV-E10 is the perfect pick for the studio. Seriously, this is the camera that I'm recommending right now to YouTubers on a budget starting a channel. So here's some sample footage between both the Panasonic S5 II and the EV10 Mark II. The Panasonic S5 II, by the way, is multiple thousands of dollars. Take a look at this. But I just wanted to compare the image quality from the Sony ZV E10 Mark II with the Panasonic S5 II that I have set up. I have both of these cameras running uh, their standard picture profiles. I'm not shooting log on either of them. I'm not shooting HDR. I just want to show you the out of camera colors between these two. So it's under a thousand bucks and you also get video features you would typically spend multiple thousands of dollars on, right? The built-in mic is okay, but Sony's hot shoe mounted mics are fantastic. And you can plug in any high-end mic from somebody like Rode or Sennheiser. You can even get Sony's XLR adapter to use studio quality mics with this. But before I tell you to just go out and get this camera, I'm going to compare it to two other cameras from Sony, which might be a better fit for you. Okay, so the ZV-E10 Mark II has a price of about $1,000 right now for body only. The Sony a6700 is $1,400 and the FX30 is $1,600. The a6700 is more versatile for photographer. The FX30 supports 16-bit RAW output over HDMI and also has a full-size HDMI jack. A big thing about the FX30 over the ZV-E10 Mark II is that it has two card slots. They're both compatible with SDUH 
HS2 and the CF Express Type A card. If you're looking for a hybrid camera that excels in both photography and video, the A6700 is the better choice. For professional videographers, the FX30 offers advanced video features, better heat management, and more versatile card storage options. All of these cameras are in my Amazon storefront below, and there's a link to that in the description below. They're affiliate links, so buying helps the store out a lot. You know what else helps? A like and a subscribe. And also chocolate, but it's really hard to put chocolate into the comments. Also, if you have any questions about the ZV-E10 Mark II or any of those other Sony cameras that I mentioned or their competitors, let me know in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. For Dave Tries This, I'm David Schloss, and as always, thanks so much for giving this a try.